thank you, thank you to the Rajim Halim Quartet for those prelude of arrangements. A special thank you to all of you that have braved the weather this morning. Though brisk, it's a beautiful morning. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you for your support. On behalf of Unity CDC and the Housing Authority of Joliet Family Self-Sufficiency Program, we thank you. We will now have the posting of colors by the Joliet West High School ROTC. I'll cite the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll now have the Joliet Central Quartet lift every voice and sing.
Thank you to Joliet West High School, ROTC, and the Joliet Central Quartet. It's always good to see young people in action. At this time, I'll introduce Mrs. Genevieve Brown, who will do the introduction of the Mistress of Ceremonies. Thank you. Good morning. I promise I won't be long, but this is the first time that I've been able to introduce anybody in a thousand years, so this it's great pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Mac Willis, Executive Director of Unity CDC. Isn't this a wonderful turnout? Come on, y'all, you can do better. And my job is to introduce the Mistress of Ceremonies for the morning, Kathy R. Evans Williams, Esquire. Because she put that on the end of it, right? <laughs> Kathy is a Joliet native. Uh, she was admitted into practice law as a member of the Illinois Bar. You all probably read this already, but she didn't put much down, so I'm going to read it anyway. Uh, General Bar of the United States District Court for Northern District of Illinois and the United States District Court for the Northern District of Indiana. Attorney Evans Williams entered the private practice of law in Chicago, Illinois in 1996. We got a woman black lawyer, y'all. Okay. She practices in the areas of family law, alternative dispute resolution, resolution, estate planning, real estate, business formation, family mediation, bankruptcy, and general counsel work for profit and not-for-profit corporations. Attorney Evans Williams is a graduate of DePaul University and the University of Illinois College of Law. She is a certified family mediator, a certified collaborative law attorney, she was also selected as one of the 2014 Chicago Defender Women of Excellence. She's a current member of the South Suburban Bar Association, Black Bar Association of Will County, Will County Bar Association, and most importantly, she put it last, but most importantly for some of us in here, Covenant United Church of Christ Legal Council Ministry. And I just want to read a little ex excerpt here, if I can find it. Would you all please bear with me? What I know for sure, life is a journey. There are many difficulties. We make mistakes, experience happiness, and endure pain. We make a difference in this life. We have the authority of choice. For my house, my business and me, I choose prayer. What do you choose? Won't you all please meet and greet the one that's going to write my book, Kathy R. Evans Williams, attorney Kathy. Good morning, good morning. Wow, this is an awesome turnout. Uh, one of the things that I think about often when I come to Joliet is my father, the late Dave Evans, who had his life work poured into the Joliet community. And so when I come to Joliet, there's always this additional love and community excuse me, feeling that I get. So I appreciate everybody coming out today to support this wonderful day uh, for Martin Luther King. So thank you once again. What we're going to do is go through the program. I'm an attorney, so I like organization, right? <laughs> so we're technically going to go through the program. We do have a couple of changes. One of those changes is that we're going to immediately hear from 
uh, the Congressman Bill Foster from the 11th District of Illinois. His schedule is really tight today, and so what we're going to do is bring him on up first, and then we'll go through the program, okay? Thank you very much. Bill Foster. Uh, thank you, Kathy, and, uh, and thanks to all of you for inviting me here to speak with you this morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Congressman Bill Foster. I'm a scientist and a businessman, and it's my honor to represent this area in Washington, D.C. And I'd like to thank the, the Unity CDC for hosting today's uh, jazz brunch and encouraging service throughout our community. I'd also like to thank the Housing Authority of Joliet's Family Self-Sufficiency Program for its work in building strong families in Joliet. I've had the opportunity to meet graduates of the FSS program, and I am always impressed with their stories and the new skills that they have gained through this program. I'd also like to recognize the Washington Junior High School Scholars. Uh, seeing these young people who've worked so hard um, to achieve is always special for me. And as a father, I know the pride that your parents must be feeling when they see their children grow into smart, high-achieving young men and women. As the President of the United States said during the State of the Union speech last week, we live in difficult and challenging times. But with this challenge also comes opportunity. Opportunity to remake our neighborhoods and our communities in our own image and our own dreams. Opportunity to rewrite the wrongs of the past and an opportunity to ensure a brighter future for our children. The work of the Unity CDC that they do in the west, east, and south sides of Joliet is an important part of those changes. Though, through better access to quality housing, transportation, and equal opportunities for economic development, Unity CDC has dedicated itself to bettering the lives of all the people in, in Joliet. This weekend, we're also celebrating the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. As someone who's the son of a civil rights lawyer, uh, my father actually knew uh, Martin Luther King and Ralph Abernathy and, and uh, many of the early leaders in the civil rights movement. Uh, this makes this celebration very personal to me. This year, we've seen too many reminders of the injustices that we still face. Too many young black lives lost. And after these failures of justice, we're faced with two choices. On one hand, we can grow bitter and cynical. We can throw our hands up and turn away from engaging with our government and our community. Or we can rise above those feelings of helplessness and come together to build the kind of neighborhoods that we want, the kind of community we need to expand opportunity and to make sure that everyone can achieve the American dream for themselves and their families and to continue the fight for justice and equality. Unity CDC is helping to create that change here in Joliet and is a shining example of what can be achieved when people come together. Again, I'd like to thank Unity CDC for their work in our community, and I look forward to the progress that Joliet will make in the year ahead. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Okay, as it relates to the program, what I'm going to do is insert little sayings, spiritual, inspirational sayings from Dr. Martin Luther King so that we all are on the same page. That's why we're here today. So before we do that, what we're going to do is introduce our speaker who's going to give us a prayer. Then we're going to have brunch. I'm going to ask you to remain in your seats until the hostess comes to your table to escort you to get your plate. And then while we're eating, we're going to hear from the Rajiv Halim Quartet. They're awesome. They also have CDs. So this is going to be great. Yay. They, have we enjoyed them so far already? So what I'd like to do now is go ahead and bring up Pastor Lazaric Hudson from Holy Trinity Ministries. Let us pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day you've given to us. We thank you for all of your blessings. We thank you for your new mercies every day. We thank you for your loving kindness. And we ask that you would bless this great occasion as we honor the Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. We ask, Lord, that we will be able to continue his work individually and collectively. We ask for peace in our neighborhoods. We ask for understanding among all sectors of Joliet. We ask, Lord, that you would bless everyone here today. Bless our leaders. Make them strong, Lord, and give them the good governing, decision-making power, Lord, to make Joliet a better place. Lord, bless our food. Bless this bounty you provided for us. All these things we ask and we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. While we make our way to brunch and the hostess will tap each table, I'd like for you to think of three inspirational quotes from Martin Luther, Dr. Martin Luther King. The first is, the time is always right to do the right thing. The second is, forgiveness is not an occasional act. It is a permanent attitude. And the third is seen is not always believing. Thank you very much. We're going to go ahead and have brunch and enjoy the sounds of Rajim Halim Quartet. Thank you. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, may we have your attention, please? Ladies and gentlemen, may we have your attention, please? Thank you. All right, awesome. It takes the deep bass voice, huh? That's what it takes, okay. All right, so have you guys enjoyed your brunch? Very good, let's have a hand for the food. Okay, and I, I felt punked before. I thought the band was going to continue to play, the orchestra was going to continue to play, but they didn't, they were putting everything together. So we were able to listen to the CD, so again, um, another round of applause for the orchestra. All right, so I want to start with three more inspirational quotes from Dr. Martin Luther King, and this is something that we should all take with us and think about, okay? So the first one is, we must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. The second one is, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. How many of us can attest to that kind of faith? That one really resonates with me, taking that first step without seeing the second or the third. That one really, really resonates with me. The third is, at the center of nonviolence stands the principle of love. We all know that Dr. Martin Luther King was about love and peace. So let's think about these inspirational quotes as we move forward with the program. What I'm going to do now is ask all of the elected officials to please stand. Do we have any elected officials in the room? Okay. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. And I'm going to ask you to please hang around afterwards so that you can all take a group photo, okay? Now, we'll move forward, and I'd like to introduce Will Seeger and Dave Collins. They're going to talk about the Washington Junior High Scholarship Program. Will Seeger and Dave Collins. How's everyone doing? Good. Um, my name is Will Seegers. This is Dave Collett, my colleague. And where did she go? 
Ms. Jennifer Marasco, uh, all representing the Scholars Group. These are our young men. And before I really talk about our program, I'd really like you to hear from the young men what it is that we represent. So I'm going to have them say our pledge for, for you, if you don't mind. Gentlemen, if you don't mind, could you just say the pledge for them, please? One, two, three. Out of the midst of darkness and into the light, I accept knowledge as my friend and welcome ignorance with spite. I will use logic and its reasoning to separate fiction from truth. I will never blindly accept knowledge without checking for proof. I will use history and its wisdom as my mentor and guide. I will stand against mental oppression with dignity and pride. I will meet obstacles head on and rearrange statistical facts. I will let my brain be my weapon and my actions be my back. I will pass knowledge on to others to walk them into the light. I will carry my scholar's torch high so my life will remain bright. I am a scholar. Thank you. Let's clap it up. And so, I could stand here and talk about the Scholars Group uh, forever and a day, but I felt that they would do a better job of just allowing you to hear what the words are that we represent and what we try to do with our group. The Scholars Group is a group that was founded at Washington Junior High School uh, three years ago, and we wanted to basically use the data to drive what it is that we wanted to do with some of our students in the school. The data showed that there was a tremendous gap in terms of African-American males at our school, and we wanted to begin to figure out ways that we can um, positively um, close those gaps. And so we started the Scholars Group. And again, we still use the data to drive what it is that we do, but we're big on teaching our young men about social responsibility, leadership, and of course being leaders in the school academically. And so with that being said, I don't want to spend too much time, but right now we're getting ready to see our first graduating group leave out. So these young men represent our graduating class. They'll be the first to leave us, and they're on their way over to the high school. So right now, we've been spending a lot of time trying to get them prepared for that, taking them on college tours, and continue to um, help them make those next steps. So I want to ask the community, before I sit down, that we're now looking to also get them to understand, to me, a community that fails to invest in its young people, fails to invest in its future. And so we are looking for summer jobs for our young people. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. It is our hope that with a campaign that we've been able to put together, and of course I'll be sending it out to some of the wonderful elected officials that we had a chance to speak with here today, that we can begin to get some summer jobs for these young men because we already know there's a lot of gang violence that exists um, in certain parts of the city. And we want to continue to be positive and continue to give them um, things to look for. So with that being said, we thank you and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. That is definitely a project that we need to get behind. Uh, we know that our children uh, need some role models. They need leadership. They need financial support. They need emotional support. So that's definitely something that we need to get behind. Now we'd like to uh, give you three more quotes. Are you guys enjoying the quotes? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. In the end, we'll remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. The second is, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And the third is, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. We have a voice. What we say matters, and what we, doesn't, what we don't say matters. We have a voice. Use it, everybody, please. OK, now I'd like to move forward with the program. And I'd like to introduce Ardell Evans, who is the senior, uh, program coordinator with the Housing Authority of Joliet Family Self-Sufficiency Program. In order to uh, stay on program and talk about what I'm supposed to talk about, I'm going to draw you all to the rear of the book. In the rear of the book, it talks about the Family Self-Sufficiency Program. 
Family Self-Sufficiency Program is a program that the Housing Authority of Joliet has implemented for the last six years. What you read in the rear of the book are the graduates from the program over this past year. Uh, with the nearly 39 families, close to 50 families that I work with now, each and every one of those families, the head of household is a, is a woman, a single mother, on average with two or three children. Uh, this program is about one thing, well, about two or three things. It's about change. People taking an opportunity to take advantage of opportunities that are available to increase your academic skills, your social skills, and ultimately your financial, your money, to build your money. You'll read about families who not only do they have these kids, they go to school every day, and they also work full time uh, to achieve their goals. Those are the ones who should be saluted. And today, we've got three of our families that are currently involved in our program that are here, uh, that are on their way. Maybe next year or the year after, we'll be honoring them for completing the program. They're here now. I'd like to recognize them and thank them for being here. Family self-sufficiency participants, please stand. Thank you. Thank you. The program is made possible by several partners that are here in this room. Joliet Junior College, Joliet Township High School, District 86, and every social, social service agency in the area that is offering a hand up for people who want to take advantage of it. So I want to again encourage you all to keep your eye on the prize and your goals. There are going to be bumps in the road. We've seen that. But we can overcome it to get to our ultimate end. Again, the Housing Authority of Joliet again honors our family self-sufficiency program and thank you for your continued support. three more quotes. The first is, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. The second, change does not roll in on the wheels of inevitability, but comes through continuous struggle. It's not easy, but if we keep pushing, we can do this. And the third, I look to a day when people will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Dr. Martin Luther King. We're now going to bring up our keynote speaker, Dr. Arvid C. Johnson. Dr. Arvid Johnson was installed as the ninth president of the University of St. Francis in June 2013. In addition to a bachelor's degree in physics from Lewis University in Romeoville and a master's degree in electrical engineering from Northeastern University and in Boston, Arvid holds an MBA from the Keenan Flager Business School at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill and a PhD in Management Science from the Stewart School of Business at the Illinois Institute of Technology. I won't read the rest because it's there for you to take a look at, but I will say that Arvid, his wife, three sons, and two dogs live in Frankfort, Illinois. <laughs> Mr. Johnson. <laughs> I have to thank Kathy for honoring my, my wish not to have that whole biography read because it's always bad when the introduction is longer than your speech and we don't want that to happen. And, and I have to, to make a correction because I need to update my bio. One of my 